This is the Talking About the Hoosiers podcast, presented by HoosierIllustrated.com. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Talking About the Hoosiers podcast, presented by HoosierIllustrated.com. I'm joined by Kyler Staley, I'm Drew Rosenberg, and this is the fourth edition of the Player Recap Series. This time, we're going to be talking about the trio of freshmen, Mackenzie Mbako, Gabe Cups, Ja'Kai Newton. Kyler, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. A little sad that this is our last one from this series, but we still got more talking about the Hoosier podcast, you know, episodes, you know, for the summer. We've got a few things in the pipeline, so uh, we'll start having some guests on here and everything. But, um, you know, I think I thought it was appropriate to kind of finish out the uh, the series with the freshmen, talk about those guys, you know, what they're going to bring um, next year. They're, they're all back next year, which is huge for Indiana. So uh, talk about how they did this past season the role for next year um, and just kind of go from there, but um, doing good. How are you doing, Drew? Yeah, I'm doing good. It's, you know, it's nice to be asked this time, Kyle. I feel like I'm always <laughs> the one asking yeah. how you're doing, but yeah, I mean, it's, you know, last, uh, last player recap series, but I still so much, so many podcasts to be recorded as more transfer commits, two more open roster spots, more, I guess, just more Indiana basketball and hopefully I guess when we get back to talking more Indiana football, it seems like there's a lot more to be excited about around there. So it's like, it seems like a good time to be covering talking Indiana sports. Yes, sir. But uh, might as well just jump right in. And I think you got to start with Mackenzie and Baco when it comes to the freshman, the highly touted five-star commit decommitted from Duke. Mike Woodson landed a late spring commitment as he's now done in th- what three consecutive off seasons. First renew, then no, Mbaka. even like it goes back to Tamar Bates even oh, before four. the season started. So, um, yeah, it went Tamar Bates and then what was mm-hmm. it? Tamar Bates, Malik Renew, and then Mackenzie and Baco, and then what Bryson Tucker this past year. So, yeah. Um, Mike Woodson kills it in the spring. I'll tell you what, that guy, guy does not panic. He's just kind of cool and calm, and he'll just wait for those five stars to come in. Yeah, I mean, you can talk about is that sustainable, but the new era of college basketball, it honestly might be, but that's not the point of this podcast. It's Mackenzie and Baco. And I think when we start with Mbako, it was a very slow start for him as a freshman. I mean, there's no other way to put it. He struggled out of the gate wasn't the shooter I guess people expected right away but then as he slowly kind of came along he became Indiana one of if not their best players by the end of the season and he had some huge moments throughout the year especially towards the end of the year yeah you want to talk about a tale of probably two half, two half seasons or whatever um it's with McKenzie and Baco yeah. a lot of frustrated fans with McKenzie and Baco to start off you know he was brought in to be a shooter he was brought in to be a five-star and Mike Woodson, you know, even with McKenzie and Baco's slow struggles, McKenzie and Baco kind of had a really, really small leash. You know, defensively, he wasn't really picking it up. He wasn't really picking up what Mike Woodson was trying to teach him. A lot of times you would see when he would have a screw-up, a major screw-up on the defensive end or wasn't making shots. He was kind of an offensive liability to start off his season just because he wasn't making shots, and that's kind of what we needed him to make, what Indiana yeah. really needed him to make. Um Mike Woodson always opted to do a Caleb Banks, a guy that, you know, had been there for a year and played with a little bit more energy on the defensive end. Even though he wasn't great on the offensive end, he was still going to be good on the defensive end as well for Indiana. But McKenzie and Baco, the leash just started growing and growing and growing as the season went on. Mike Woodson would be a little bit, you know, wouldn't pull him quickly. He would let kind of McKenzie try to figure it out on the floor a little bit. And I think throughout the year, him doing so, just grew McKenzie and Baco's yeah. um, confidence. I, I think he just became a more confident player. Once he started finding his rhythm, especially from behind the arc, he was actually really, really good for Indiana. And he started playing with confidence. He was taking it to the basket. He was just doing a lot of things on the floor offensively. While the defense still never really like got to really where you wanted him to, it to be for him, um, his offensive game was just phenomenal towards the end of the season, which ultimately led him, I think it was the start of January. Um, yeah. He had an incredible stretch the final few months, which got him to becoming the co-Big Ten freshman of the year. Yeah, Mike Wilson now has coached back-to-back freshman of the year, which I think that's a really great stat for him, a really good selling point for any incoming freshman that can come in. I'm sure that was a selling point with Bryson Tucker as well. Hey, he's going to develop him. And I do think it is funny – you know, a lot of fans were frustrated, media were frustrated, like, what's McKenzie Baco? Like, he's not bringing anything to this team and stuff. 
And Mike Woodson just said, you know, probably a little bit more aggressive than what I'm going to say, but he just kept saying, you guys expected this five-star freshman to come in right away just because he had the five-star label. Um, you expect him to just be phenomenal right away, and that's not the case with this team. I think Jalen Hushafino is a perfect example of that. Jalen Hushafino really struggled. People often forget that. He was not very good when he started yeah. his Indiana career, but obviously when Xavier Johnson got down, he had to grow up a little bit. Kenzie Baco really didn't have anybody that went down where he had to grow up. He just had to grow up. That's just kind of yeah. how it was and just, you know, play with a lot more confidence. But you got to give major props to McKenzie and Baco. He got better throughout the season. Um, and honestly, you could make the case, other than probably Khalil Ware, he probably was Indiana's best player, you know, down the stretch. Yeah. I mean, you mentioned it. Like, we kind of talked about it. He struggled to shoot the ball at the beginning of the year. And then as Woodson kind of started to lengthen the leash a bit, the confidence started to go up, and you started to see towards the end of the year he was taking six, seven, eight threes a game towards the end of the year. And those, I, that's, I guess that's really where you want Mbaka. I mean, we talked about it all year. It felt like he was playing a little bit out of position with two bigs. Seems like he's going to be back at the small forward position again. But I think a year or a full summer, a full offseason with Cliff Marshall could do wonders. I mean, we've seen him with other guys. Malik Renew is a perfect example. Renew still, still is not the quickest guy, but you – at least I could tell there was a significant difference in his body after last year. He got a lot quicker, a lot stronger, and expect the same from Mackenzie and Baco after uh, this summer. And I think that's going to be really big for his development as a player. I mean, a lot of people expected him to be a one and done guy. Didn't end up being the case, but now he has a chance to really play his way into the first round next year when he takes on a bigger role on the Indiana offense and becomes, I guess, could be one of the primary off offensive options and when you look at the starting fives around Mbako now you have two shot creators whereas last year they didn't really have those guys who could create shots so Mbako could be getting a lot more open catch and shoot opportunities versus last year it seems like a lot of his catch and shoot opportunities had to be scripted and a lot of them were contested yeah absolutely I think obviously the big thing you want to see with Mackenzie and Mbako is you want to see him improve on the defensive end now an argument could be case he might be guarding out of position a little bit you know those wings out there are probably a little bit more quicker than yeah. him and he's probably best guarding a stretch four somewhere around there um, but you also look at a lot of things towards the end of the season Indiana was playing a lot better probably their best basketball down you know the last month of the season where they started picking up winning streaks and things like that a lot of that had to do was Mike Woodson shortened the front court rotation. And oftentimes you saw him shift McKenzie and Baco down to the four when uh, Khalil Ware, Malik Renew were out, you know, for a certain amount of minutes. I think honestly, you'll see a lot more of that this upcoming year. Right now, mm -hmm. as we stand, the really the front court players right now are Omar Balo, Malik Renew, and McKenzie and Baco. I expect them to get another big guy because you really do need a backup center um, just to have. But I think you'll see a lot of times this season where you'll see McKenzie and Baco play that four. I know a lot of Indiana fans really just wanted to see Malik Renew and McKenzie and Baco be that starting front court, a more modern day um, version of that. But that was just never going to really happen. That's not what Mike Woodson wants to run. But you will see it oftentimes, you know, throughout the games and everything. I think he trusts that lineup a little bit more, especially when you're going up against a more athletic team as well with that. But Mackenzie and Baco really does have a chance to get his name back into a lottery yeah. type of situation. I, I think Mackenzie and Baco, he's going to be one of the best scorers in the Big Ten, yeah. um, especially just when it comes to versatility. Defensively, still question marks. We want to see kind of where he improves on with there. Hopefully he's much better on that end. If he's much better on that end, then he's going to be one of the toughest players when it comes to the Big Ten next season. But he has a real big chance to become an all-Big Ten team um, candidate. And so we'll just kind of see where he's at with that and everything. But um, you're going to get scoring with McKenzie and Baco. You're going to get a sophomore McKenzie and Baco, a much older McKenzie and Baco. So it'll be nice to see for this Indiana team and expect him to be one, the starter on the wing. Yeah. And at the end of the year, I think when we were kind of talking about Mbako, if he came back, at least I remember saying it, I kind of thought he could be an 18, 19 point per game score. With this roster, I just don't see that anymore. And it's not anything to do with Mbako. It's just, the amount of other scores with Kane and Carlisle, Miles Rice, Umar Balo, there's so many more mouths to feed now, where it's, I just don't see that happening. But I think that will do wonders for his efficiency, where he might be averaging around the similar, I think he averaged last year, what was it, 12.6 a game or 12.2 a game. He could be around that number, maybe a little higher, 13, 14 a game. But the efficiency is a lot better. And that's something, I guess, 
at least I'm looking to see this year, see how that develops with more talent around him, which will lead to more spacing, less of a focus on him. Because you watched teams last year, Indiana was, or Mackenzie and Baco was really Indiana's only three point threat, especially in the starting five. So teams did everything they could to run him off the line. And if it wasn't in Baco, teams were really camping in the paint. So having more guys around him that can shoot the ball, space the floor, should do wonders for him offensively. Yeah, and obviously, you know, one of those guys you're kind of hoping to uh, step up would be Gabe Cups, right? Yeah. You know, playmaker-wise. So um, you want to talk about a guy with Gabe Cups, a guy that got thrown into the fire um, oh, as a freshman. Yeah. He was not really supposed to play the minutes that he was playing. Um a lot of that, you know, obviously Xavier Johnson went down. You weren't expecting that. But a lot of that really does come down to Mike Woodson not getting another senior experience backcourt player. And you were just kind of stuck. I think he put way too many chips when it came to the health of Xavier Johnson. And obviously it didn't, you know, that bet really didn't, you know, pan out the way you wanted it. So, but here's the thing with Gabe Cups is even though he wasn't ready, you know, for that kind of role, that senior or that starting lead guard role, he's another guy by default got better because of that. Mm-hmm. He was put into, you know, a lot more pressure situations. Um, he was expected to be a, um, you know, <laughs> he had to be the primary ball handler in a lot of ways, you know, and Trey Galloway trying to kind of lead him, you know, on and where everything, but like, um, he's not the biggest guy on the floor. He's another guy that probably is going to benefit more from getting in the weight room with Cliff Marshall yeah. um, and everything. But the experience that he got as a freshman is only going to make him better. Plus, when Xavier Johnson was healthy, he was going up against Xavier Johnson in practice. So, obviously, mm-hmm. you're going to get better when you're going up against a guy like Xavier Johnson. Um, but Cups, you know, you really kind of have to give him a little bit of a pass. He didn't have the best year or not. But, I mean, honestly, nobody would have – the year that they would expect when you were thrown in, unless you were a Jalen Hushafino like that. But um, the things I want to see with the Gabe Cubs next year that I thought were a little bit problems with him this past year was I don't want him to see him be passive. I thought he was way too yeah. passive when it came to shots. Um, he's not <laughs> – here's a narrative that I really, really get annoyed with when it comes down to, like, Gabe Cubs is. I think people expected him to be Jordan Halls and expected him to come in and be, like, a knockdown shooter. That was never his game. And I think that was just kind of blown out of proportion a lot just because people really wanted him to be a Jordan Halls, which is not what it is. Can he be that way? Absolutely he can. But um, for him to be that, he's got to learn to take the shots when they're open and not be passive and pass those up. Too many opportunities that he left on the board, he's just got to be aggressive. And with being more aggressive, he'll find more consistency with his shot making because he does have a good shot. Um, I, I forget what game it was. There was one game in the Big Ten tournament. I think it was the Penn State game. He started off the game just draining threes, and he was making mm-hmm. shots. And like, you know, if he's doing that, that's an extra element for Indiana. So I'm really curious to see with these new players that they brought in what his, exactly his role is going to be. Um, but he's not going to have a lot of pressure like he did last year. Yeah, I think the game you're referring to is the Auburn game, if I'm not mistaken, where they okay. kind of came out. Yeah, he kind of yeah. came out, buried two threes early. But, yeah, you mentioned it. I mean, he was thrown to the fire. You brought up Jalen Hojifino, and I think you look at the two just – for starters, Gabe Cups came into college, what, 6'2", 170, 175, or Jalen Hojifino was 6'6", 215. Hojifino had an NBA body at age 18, which helps a lot when you're playing at a new level, more physical game. And I think Cups at times kind of struggled with that physicality of the game, just being a smaller guard, but he worked so hard. And we talk about it with Trey Galloway. You always know what you're going to get with Cups. You know he's going to play hard. You know he's a hard-nosed guy, going to be diving on the floor uh, on the floor for loose balls, and he's going to make the right play. And you mentioned it. It was my biggest gripe with Gabe Cups all season long, aggressiveness. He didn't ever seem to look to score, and as a freshman, that's understandable. But Cups, when he needs to be someone who's willing to take shots, willing to take the open three when he gets it, because if they don't, if he's not taking it, they're not going to guard it. We saw it at times last year, teams would kind of sag off Gabe Cups because they knew he was going to be hesitant to take those shots. But he really loves that mid-range. I mean, I feel like we saw it a lot last year. He would go to that mid, try to hit that 16, 17, 18 footer consistently last year. Didn't fall as much, but I think next year, I think we'll see it fall a little more. But it's also going to be interesting because now Indiana adds, uh, you bring back Trey Galloway, you add 
Ken and Carlisle, Miles Rice. Now it's wondering as Gabe Cups last year and wound up being the de facto number two ball handler. Now where does he kind of end up? As it seems like he's going to be the fourth ball handler on the on the roster. Yeah, and obviously we know just from you know Gabe Cups over the past year and everything, he's a workhorse. He's oh, in the yeah. gym constantly. I mean, what's he's got? What's it called? The Breakfast Club that he always was promoting and everything. You know, he's in the gym before anybody else. He's getting shots up and stuff. He's going to get better. He's going to be a really really good card yeah. by the by the end of his college career. Um, but next year. I don't want to call it like a step back. I really don't think it's a step back. He's still going to have an extremely important role. Um, I still expect him to play 15 plus minutes a game. Um, he's going to be obviously part of that backcourt rotation, but you're going to get guys that are more dynamic than him, you know, with Carlisle and Rice that are probably going to be the starters. And then you'll have him there that has all this experience and everything as well, you know, having playing starting minutes in the Big Ten for a a program that's got a lot of passion and not a lot of patience and everything. You, he's got that experience. So um, that's good for Indiana. It really is, you know, at the end of the day. So, and like I mentioned with the Trey Galloway, Anthony Leal episode, heaven forbid if Rice or Carlisle or even Galloway, someone goes down or whatever, you can rely on cups to yeah. come and step in um, and be a part of that starting rotation. If he has to be and everything like, I think this is going to be a really good year for him. Um, I think consistently his numbers are going to get better. Um, he's going to have less turnovers. He's just going to be a really consistent piece for this team and a guy that you can trust when he's on the floor. He's going to play his heart off. He's going to play his butt off. I mean, he's going to be a guy. He's a coach's son. Um, he's a winner. That's another yeah. thing, too, is he's a winner. He's won it at the high school level. He's really good in the AAU with his team, his dad coach. Um, he's a winner, and that's what you need on this team. He's going to be a really good guard. You just got to be patient with him right now. Um, and this year is going to be a really good spot for him. Not a whole lot of pressure. He's going to come in. He just needs to play his game and just be a little bit – he's got to be a lot more less passive. That, that's just yeah. Oh, yeah. And I mean, you look at Gabe Cups, I and mean, we talk about being less passive. That's just going to come with more experience, more games, more trust in him, I guess, from himself. And the work he puts in, he should trust it. So I think – we're going to see a more aggressive Gabe Cups moving forward. It's just going to be kind of how much do we see him on the floor with so many new guards added to the Indiana roster next year. And we talk about Gabe Cups. There was another guard who we didn't see at all last year, Ja'Kai Newton. Another freshman, four-star, missed the entire season after uh, having a surgery at the beginning of the year, a knee surgery if I want to. Yeah. I think yeah. It was, yeah, yeah. But Ja'Kai Newton was a guy I think we were all really excited to see. Didn't end up seeing him, and I think it was another reason Woodson didn't really add another guard. I think he didn't expect to not have Ja'Kai Newton all season. So, like, for a recap of Ja'Kai Newton, it's kind of hard. I mean, there you know, not much game tape. or no, no game tape, but he's a guy. I mean, we saw it. He is big, strong. You've seen it at high school level. Super athletic. So it's going to be really interesting because he kind of brings, like, a different element to the back card backcourt in the Indiana roster than some other guys do. Yeah, he's uh, – I think he's titled the wild card of this Indiana team next year. Yeah. You really don't know what you're going to get with Ja'Kai. Um, yeah, you didn't see him at all last year. He he had surgery and um, never – I mean, there was never really any reason to really – you know, the season was what it was. There was never really any reason to, to play him, you know, try to push him back or whatever. He's only a freshman. You know, things were going to come slow with him anyways. So – the problem is with Jakai is he really hasn't played basketball in nearly two years. Um, he got hurt early in his last year of AAU. I was actually at that event where he did got his first injury. He only played a handful of games his senior year. Um, and that one injury, the injury that he had, he just never really fully recovered off of that. So when he got back, you know, or got to Bloomington, got up with the team and everything, just never was really 100%. He needed to have another surgery. And that was, you know, it's probably the best for him because there's really, I mean, you kind of question, okay, if a healthy Ja'Kai Newton, what would he have brought to Indiana? You just don't know the answer to that because he's never played in college. So you just don't know. But from if you want to go back and watch Ja'Kai at the high school level, the dude's a freak athlete, yeah. freak athlete, a guy that's tough. He's a Georgia boy. Um, all those Georgia boys, I feel like just come in and just play tough. 
Um, they've got a certain edge to them. Um, I know, I, know I, I think it was Christian Watford said it. Uh, he, you know, he said, you know, Indiana does really well when they got Georgia boys on their team. And they and Indiana's done well, honestly, with getting these Georgia commitments. I mean, Carlisle Rice, they're Georgia kids. Coach this year, Roseman's done a great job um, bringing in those guys. So next year, he is the wild card. Yeah. What role is he going to have? What is he going to play at all? I really don't see him playing a whole lot next year just because, like I mentioned, he hasn't played basketball in nearly two years. He's going to be kind of that guy that needs to kind of sit and watch a little bit and get his minutes where he can get his minutes. Yeah. Uh, and I could be completely wrong about that. You don't even know what he's going to do in practice and everything. I think he's back to full health, and we've seen a few clips of him having yeah. the explosive dunks or whatever. But he brings a new element to this Indiana team that, you know, people that really haven't watched a guy ever play at the high school level. The dude's a stud athlete. He attacks the basket extremely well, um, loves to play physical, loves to play defense. You know, he, he's a guy that wants to be the best. I think he said his favorite player is Russell Westbrook, and you get a lot of that from yeah. So um, obviously he's a guy that's tough and everything. And he's not, I wouldn't say a lights out shooter. He's a capable three point shooter for what I've seen. So obviously he can get better in that area or whatever, but his role is going to be a little bit weird next year. He is that wild card. I love using that term for him. That's just kind of what he is, but um, we'll kind of see if he can carve a path, you know, hopefully, um, it, hopefully there's not a desperate situation where he needs to play important minutes. Hopefully that everyone's doing their job where he doesn't have to play a whole lot, but it will be curious to see. I'm more excited to see when he does get those minutes, what he does on the floor. Yeah. So I think there's a lot of upside. I think the Indiana staff, Mike Woodson, I think they're all really, really high on Ja'Kai. Um, obviously it sucks that you didn't get to see him his freshman year, but uh, um, it'll just be really cool to see and everything. So I, I think he's part of the future for this Indiana team. As far as building the program, you know, for the future, I think he's part yeah. of that, part of those plans. So, um, Jakai not going to have a whole lot of pressure on him next year, but we'll just kind of see what his role is. Yeah, and it's, I mean, it's, I guess it's kind of a good issue to have that Jakai Newt might not see the minutes that you'd want, maybe not want him to have, but you want him to get on the floor. But having so many guards in front of him, it'll be good. Like he's going to be able to learn from Trey Galloway, learn from the guys ahead of him on the depth chart but also work his way back is, I mean, you mentioned he hasn't really played basketball in a while. So for him, having those guys in front of him, is going to be very helpful for him as he kind of keeps moving forward with his recovery from injury and surgery. Yeah. I mean, we'll just kind of see where it's at and everything, but man, Drew, do we have anything else we got to talk about or no? I, I don't think so. I think that's it. I mean, I think that's it on this series, right? Man. Yeah. That's, that was fast. I mean, it felt fast, but then at the same time, I mean, it was probably over a month at this whole thing, but you know. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of what it is. But I mean, like I've talked about, there's a lot more to come with this talking about the Hoosiers podcast. I, I really want to grow this thing. Um, I know Drew wants to grow this thing. So um, we're going to start bringing in more guests. We've got a few guests in mind. Yeah. Um, I'm hoping we can land them and everything. So I'm not going to, I'm going to kind of tease it for now, but uh, we've got some big guests coming up. So I think Indiana fans are going to like hearing. Um, the guys that we bring on and stuff. So, but things are exciting right now. If you're Indiana, you know, the transfer portal, Indiana's arguably yeah. the top team right now when it comes to that, still a few more open scholarships. So we'll see. I mean, by the time this comes out, the portal will be closed. So nobody else will be entering and everything. It's just all about filling the scholarships. Yeah. Um, with that, I'm sure once it gets close to the season, maybe the end of the summer, somewhere around there, I'm sure we'll have some kind of series where we preview the new faces yeah. Um, and everything too, but this recap series was fun. Season's over with, obviously, it's in the past, so I think Indiana fans are ready for the future. Yeah, and I guess you you mentioned it. Um, some uh, some guests we're hoping we can get on pretty soon. If uh, the one that we've kind of talked about a little bit, if we can get that get get that guest, uh, I think the fans are gonna love that. I I'm, I mean, I myself am really excited just with the thought of doing it. I, but it would be a re it'd make for a great podcast, and I'm uh, sure the you guys all watching at home would uh, enjoy that a lot. But with that being said, for all things IU athletics, follow Indiana underscore FRN on Twitter, Facebook, and check out the HoosierIllustrated.com website, and make sure to subscribe to Hoosier Illustrated on both YouTube and Spotify. Hoosier Illustrated has also partnered with Tom Brady's company, Autograph, to streamline our coverage so you can do what you do best, fall IU sports. Use the code IndianaFR to get started today. As always, thank you for tuning in to the Talking About the Hoosiers podcast. We'll be back soon.